Howdy partnoids, welcome to another CMB Minecraft tutorial. Today I've got the old pulse limiters for you. Uh, this is by request as per usual. I'm going to show you how to build them, their uses, which some of you probably already know. Um, I've been using them recently in a couple of tutorials and building the back cave and stuff. Um, so yeah, I'll show you uses, what I use them for and um, how to combine them to make other stuff. So cool, stay tuned. Hawkeye. So the first thing I'll do is show you how to build it and then I'll explain it. So two blocks like that, repeater in the middle on three delay, uh, three ticks, and then two torches there and you just link it up and that's the circuit done. And then your input is this block here. So as you can see the dust turns on and on, uh, off and on really fast. Um, now this is the kind of standard one that I use if you wanted to extend the time that the pulse goes for you just separate the blocks further and put more repeaters in here provided that your input time so from your lever here for example whatever you're going to hook up to this is kind of constant you can do that and it'll extend the time that the circuit um, pulses for so and then down whereas this one is up and down a lot quicker so yeah that's how you'd extend it out you just got to put more repeaters in but you're using this exactly the same thing here where you're connecting up two knot gates basically so I'll explain how this all works so if I take it back to uh, the basics we've got two knot gates so with a block with a torch on the side and then when you connect those up you've got this torch here turned off. So our default state when no input's coming into this block is our output is off, basically, is the default state. And then when you have an input here on, our output is on. So that's that's just the knot gates inverting each other like that. And then in the middle, to make it pulse for a short period of time, you put this repeater here with three delay. And what that now does, instead of it just default turning this on and off it actually repowers the knot gate and inverts it back again so when you pull this this turns off which allows this torch to turn on but then at a delay this repowers the block and then turns this off again so it only pulses for a very short period of time and that's why this happens like that so that's that's the basic principle behind the whole thing and all it is is a torch or a piece of dust being turned on and off faster than your input here would be normally so obviously this is constant this is still inputting as we speak but the pulse has already been and gone because this knot gate's been unpowered and then repowered in a very short period of time so obviously affecting the length of the, the uh, repeater here changes what happens at the other end and that's because obviously the time between this torch turning off and this repeater turning on is longer. And that's why this works like that. So that's the basic principle behind uh, pulse limiters. So I'll just show you how to build a one wide and then I'll show you the applications. So it goes very similar to the first one. You've got two blocks like that with a repeater in the middle and then three delay. And then you're going to have a torch on top this time and a torch at the end like that. Then you've got a block there and a block there and dust uh, connecting up like that. So it's doing exactly the same job. The first torch is by default turning this torch off because it goes through this block, through this redstone into that torch. And then we've got a repeater also hooked up to this knot gate at the start. And that just does exactly the same job as the first one like that. And of course, if you want to extend it out, it's exactly the same as the second one. So you just bring this out, delays, and then you extend that here. Whack it on there a little bit like that. Uh, and, and the pistons. So now the delay is just a bit longer, basically. So that's how you do it one wide if you guys want to kind of tile them next to each other like this uh, for whatever reason in your circuitry that's the one I would suggest using uh, now I will show you how to combine them with other 
uh, gates and ideas that I've used them in, basically. So, yeah. Right, so applications and stuff like that. Um, and combinations of gates with these. So, the first thing, really, is using the quirk of pistons, getting a one-tick pulse. They spit out um, a block and then pull back in. And then if you give them another pulse, they pull it back in. So, that's a toggle, essentially. So, this is actually acting as a T flip-flop right now. Um, and the way that you'd actually be able to hook that up to an output is by using the old torch blur block job. So if we press this button here, it goes through the pulse limiter, makes the piston spit the block out above the torch, and then we get a door open. And then if we press the button again, it pulls it back in. So that's the kind of T flip flop an idea, and that's you know really useful, um, especially if you want to make compact. So this circuit that I showed you guys in my little switch reference guide, this blue part is the pulse limiter and then this pink part is the T flip flop that it creates. And obviously that all it's doing is getting that piston to um, turn on and off in one tick. So it pulls the block in and then it spits it out like we just had over there. So that's kind of how you create T flip flops using this idea. And again, it's doing exactly the same thing here with the pulse limiter. And then obviously you can combine that with buds and stuff like that. So if you saw this in 60 seconds with CMB, the normal bud is the blue circuit. And then this pink bit with this torch added on at the end is what makes it a T flip flop as well. So we update it. It opens the door and leaves it open. We update it again, it pulls it back in. Whereas if that wasn't there, we just get a very short pulse that wouldn't keep the door open. So that is that one. And then this example is from uh, building the back cave where I've used the bud, the um, pulse limiter, and then the latch at the end, an RS null latch at the end. And what this allows me to do is have a constant pulse here because it's gone through this um, pulse limiter, but also be able to reset the latch. Whereas if this pulse limiter wasn't in the middle, and this was still retracted because the dust hadn't stopped glowing, I wouldn't be able to reset this latch because it would still be getting constant power in here. And I want to be able to reset the latch because in building the back cave, when you walk over the pressure plate to get into the combination lock room, I wanted the doors to reset behind you and I needed to do it through a latch. But if this button from when I'd opened the doors was still lit as it is now, I wouldn't have been able to do that. So I had to use a pulse limiter in the middle. Um, so yeah, that's that's just kind of combining uh, gates there. And then sort of a final use here was I actually used a pulse limiter in my clock, um, in the digital clock, not in my counter um, 1K subspecial video. In that, I used a one second uh, length in here, not this short, but this is just for an example. And then I had one second delays between each line, whereas this is not quite that. Um, and what that allowed me to do was feed it into a decoder. So say each one of these doors is a line from the decoder and then it would display the number and then turn it off, display the number, turn it off and so forth down the line. So if you see now, on, off, on, off, all the way down. And that's how I displayed the numbers um, for the clock in the seconds counter. Um, because otherwise, if you just had it full power like that all the time, each line would just be open and not close uh, and do it in sequence. So that's how I did that. And then you guys are probably sick of seeing this bit, but this is from the door entrance, um, which I'll put links to. So that's another use for it. Uh, and that's pretty much it for today. Um, so cheers for watching.